And I'm going through some of uh, Charlie Russell's illustrations. And uh, the reason is there's a one illustration where he shows a scalp lock or scalp locks, how they were formed in the back of the head. I remember how they did it. I just would like to refine that photograph or that painting. It was a, it was in a letter uh, that he wrote years ago, uh, back at the beginning of the century or at the end of the, I mean, back at the beginning of the last century and, uh, or towards the end of the century before. Anyway, that's kind of a neat painting right there of an Indian woman. called Water Girl. Kind of, I love that kind of painting. This is Michael Terry. This is back in 1991 when I first met him and uh, but there are holes punched in the shirt all over the place. Which probably made it a cool shirt to wear in the summertime. Anyway, let's take a look at another picture. There's a frontal picture of him. And all his clothing, uh, even that rifle, that, that uh, actually a musket, was uh, an actual Indian musket. It was cut off. The barrel was cut off right there. Uh, it's because uh, he would ride on a horseback and it'd be a lot better than carrying a big long barrel. But uh, that's Michael Terry at his best. He made everything he's wearing and everything he's holding. Uh, the bow, the arrows, everything. And he made them the way the Indians would have made them. With sinew and, and such. Here's another view of Michael Terry. He uh, does modeling sessions for artists, uh, and this was the first one I ever attended with him. This was on his property uh, north of Sheridan, Wyoming. Just magnificent. So, when you ask someone of his caliber what... Uh, and or how something was uh, done uh, and he gives you an answer that's pretty pretty much it so I'm going to go ahead and get started he's got several books out <sighs> Michael Terry <coughs> Michael Terry, or Michael Badhand, uh, has a website. It's uh, on uh, warrior plus, warriorsplus.com. And uh, this is the uh, first page, and then I'm just going to go to the books. And here's one of his books called uh, Plains Indians, Regalia, and Costumes. And it's just an outstanding book. It's not badly priced either. One is called uh, Plains Indians Regalia and Costumes. And the other one is called Daily Life in a Plains Indian Village of 1868. Great books. Great reference materials. And I'm glad to, that he's a friend of mine. Alright, let's get busy on the clay. So if you're wondering what that first part was about on this video, I uh, contacted Michael Terry, or by Michael Badhand, uh, and I asked him, how would the feathers be attached to the back of the head? Uh, would it be a disc? Would it be some kind of uh, decoration? And uh, he basically said it would just be uh, feathers stuck into his... Uh, scalp lock, which would be a braid in the back of his head. 
Uh, scalp locks were uh, a sign of a warrior. Uh, it was kind of like a uh, come take my scalp if you, if you can type of thing. And uh, anyway, that's uh, what I'm going to do is put a scalp lock on the uh, back of his head right here. And I was just doing a little research to uh, see if I can back up my memory of what a scalp lock how the part in the hair would be and and stuff like that. I'm going to take the feathers out. <coughs> I'm going to prepare the area for the scalp lock. It would be a triangle. Hair right at the back of his head, which would affect the hairstyle a little bit too. Okay, the first thing I want to do is make the braids. They'd be uh, three thin braids. So I'm just gonna get the lumps out of the clay here. It takes a little practice to learn how to roll clay out without it ha having it flip around and and break. Okay, I've got one braid finished out. I think it'll be fine. You don't want the braids too thick because if you've ever seen a scalp lock, they're very thin. Anyway, here we go. The clay wants to get away from me and start flopping around, and that causes problems, but uh, I'm not allowing that to happen. you got to control the clay. The clay doesn't control you. Now, you may be asking yourself, why am I attaching this to the knee of the warrior? Well, you got to have some place to do the braiding. That's convenient. Now you just start braiding. You just do it slow. The clay wants to break, but it's flexible enough that if you just take it slow, it'll braid. It's all using patience. Now it's time to attach the uh, braid. I'm 
pressing it up against the clay so that it'll be easily cast and bring it down in front. So that's a scalp lock and I'm going to finish off the, uh, the hair up here. What I want to do is I want to create a uh, wedge of clay for the hair. Okay, I'm not going to attach the feathers until I get done with all the texturing of the hair. I'll go back over the hair before it gets cast but this gives them a good idea of what it's going to look like at the foundry and uh, really how uncomplicated the hair will be just going to test out where my feathers are going to go I'll redo this hair up here in wax uh, so they can cut it off and take the feathers off and, and make a mold of those separate so that they never lose their uh, position. At least that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I may, you know, plans change, but uh, that's going to be it for now. Mm -hmm. All right, next time. Bye. Give me a thumbs up and share my video and then check out my instructional dvds uh the link down below this video all right see you next time